Alright, hello guys, in this video we're going to be talking about our next tropical disturbance and how it could affect states like Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. But before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also check out the links in the description and the pinned comment. Now let's get right into things. First off, we're looking at our satellite imagery and what I want you to pay attention to is those areas just to the south of Cuba there. Now you can see a lot of those reds and blacks and even a little bit of white popping in. That's where our disturbance is located right now, and it's just starting to get its act together, just developing more and more tall clouds here. So this is our satellite imagery. Again, that's our disturbance there in a lot of those reds south of Cuba. Now, we're going to be talking about our temperatures here in the Gulf of Mexico, because that's the direction this one's going to head. You can see a lot of those 30s, 31s. That's very, very warm waters there in the Gulf and to the south of Cuba, but it's going to get only warmer as it heads into the Gulf as we have very, very warm sea surface temperatures in that location. Now, here's your tropical intensity index. Highly favorable uh, conditions there just to the south of Cuba and then for basically all of the Gulf of Mexico, we have highly favorable conditions there in the red, which means that this one can really intensify as much as it wants to with as much time as it has, it's going to be able to develop as much as it wants to. And I've seen systems like this that look like they're not going to really get their act together, turn into eventually hurricanes. So I don't, I don't necessarily think that's going to happen with this one, but it is always possible. Here's your sea surface temperature anomalies. And you can see just to the south of Cuba, we have below average temperatures. But in the Gulf of Mexico, it's basically all above average temperatures there. So basically, it's above average conditions. It's better conditions than average in the Gulf as of right now. Now we're going to go model by model and take a look at where these models have this one heading. We're looking at the cyclonic relative velocity and basically we can just see rotation in the upper air with this. And you can see the ECMWF has this one located in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico by Thursday 12Z. So this is in 60 hours. Then 72 hours out, so heading into Thursday night, you can see a lot of those reds. That's where this is located and you can see it's basically horizontal with Texas at this point. And then at hours 96, you can see it makes impact with areas in between Louisiana and Texas. I've seen the model show this one hitting Texas as far south as Houston. I've seen them hit this one hit, you know, more like Louisiana, more towards New Orleans. So this one can really hit anywhere at this point. And you're going to see it in my forecast map at the end that this one can really hit anywhere in the Gulf. We're going to need to let this one get its act together and then really decipher where it's going to hit exactly. So I have a broad area of where this one could make impact. Now, here's your rainfall according to the ECMWF model, which is the European model, by the way. And you see a lot of those blues. That's where we're expecting anywhere from half an inch to an inch of rain. The yellow is an inch to, to maybe one and a half inches of rain. The red is two to five inches of rain. And then those brown colors is 6 to 9 inches of rain. And then in the blue is 10 to 14 inches of rain. You can see there is an area in Louisiana where they have getting over 10 inches of rain, according to the European model, which is very interesting. That would create a lot of flooding. So we need to pay close attention to this one, because even if it doesn't develop into a tropical storm or hurricane, this one will bring a lot of rain to Louisiana and even Mississippi, as you can see. Here's your GFS model, and we're getting things started. You can see there's not a lot going on. It is located in the middle of the Gulf by this point, as this is 78 hours out. Again, Friday morning, this is what we're looking at right now, and not a lot getting developed on the GFS. The GFS does not have this one developing as fast or as much as the ECMWF model, and you can see by Friday afternoon, it's already located off the basically just offshore of Louisiana, and it's just now getting its act together. So it's a lot later than the ECMWF model. And you can see that it does make impact with the same area on the GFS model. Right in between Texas and Louisiana, we see it finally getting its act together. A, a little bit too late here by this point. This is late, late, late Friday night, 96 hours out. And here's your total rainfall according to the GFS model. You can see it's a lot of those reds for Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Some of those dark reds, but none of the brown or blue like the ECMWF model has, which isn't surprising because the European model has it getting developed much earlier and being able to collect a lot more moisture and develop more and more. So really we're looking at a general 
two to five inches of rain for a lot of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas, which again could still cause flooding, but it's not going to be those, you know, 10 inch amounts of rain according to the GFS model. Now, here's my official forecast on what I think is going to happen with this one over the next five days. You see, we have our low pressure system just to the south of Cuba, just like we saw. Then it's going to head right over the Yucatan Peninsula and into the Gulf and then head into the central Gulf. And then it really broadens up from that point. It could hit anywhere in Texas, anywhere in Louisiana, and it could even actually make landfall in Mississippi, Alabama, or the uh, Pan... Pan, panhandle of Florida instead. So really this one, we're going to have to watch it develop and see what happens. Already we can tell that the most likely impact area is somewhere in Louisiana or the you know border of Texas and Louisiana there. That looks like the most likely. But again, once this one develops and we get some spaghetti models going for this one, we're going to have a much, much better idea of where this one could hit. And I've seen these ones look like they're going to make impact with somewhere and then they get developed and then we have a whole different idea of what's going to happen and it completely changes its mind. So I'm keeping this one very broad for now and there will definitely need to be updates on this one as we move forward. We're going to have to definitely wait for more model guidance to come out and be able to know and we'll be able to thin this this cone of uncertainty out and, and have a much better idea of where we think this one's going to impact. Again, most likely area is Louisiana, but it could completely go in a different direction at this point. So stay tuned for future updates as they're going to be needed with this one. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to let you know early. I think this is probably one of the earliest sources coming out and showing you guys that this is possible. I don't know. I don't really pay attention to other sources. But I wanted to let you guys know early that this one will be most likely developing. And we will be seeing impacts in the coming days from this one. Have a great day, guys, and stay safe as this system impacts the southeastern United States and the Gulf states of the United States.